and Sean. <laughs> that's that, a man and we're the boys. Two boys. Well, you guys don't start saying man child, man child, man child. <laughs> that must have that must have driven you crazy. Oh man. That was, some of the other ones were good. Like like Rain Man was great. Oh Rain Man was great, man. They still call me that a lot, but the man child, I used to shake my hand. You're, you're killing me. You're killing me right now. <laughs> Hi boys, what is your favorite dunker of all time? Present company excluded. Well, how, you want to go first there, pal? Oh, man, my, 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 I'm going to say uh, my favorite dunker. You can go old school if you want to get someone to motivate you. Go, I'm going to go Dr. J, Fish to Save Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember that basketball <laughs> scene when <laughs> Dante took off? And, I mean, he was just doing the dunks for the young lady over there by the Rolls Royce, and he was just... <laughs> Dunking the ball from every which angle. The fish that say Pittsburgh, man. That is it. Remember the up and under on Jabbar was awesome. I, I, I'll say, uh, I'll go old school too, man. David Thompson, Ooh. NC State. So it was the first, I guess, little guy. It wasn't that little. It was 6'3", six, 6'4", six, but... You said like two balls, right? Yeah. yeah. He, was, uh, he had ridiculous hops. All right, I'll go contemporary. All right. Just as far as dunking, not greatest player ever or anything like that, but I thought Vince Carter made it exciting yeah. again. He kind of made it very exciting. A guy who was a little smaller than Sean, who could get up there and just get Absolutely. filthy with it. Jumping over big guys. I like that a lot. So I'll, I'll go with Vince Carter. Now, if we could, present company wasn't excluded. No, come was on. It. You know, uh, Vince Carter. Come on. Uh, we listen, still, look, this guy over here even told us that, that he, he used some Sean Kemp moves in a dunk contest. See. I mean, your moves were the moves. Hey, the we can do those on Nerf hoops. They work. Too. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they work better now, man. But you know, the brain thing was like this, man. I, when I dunked the basketball, I wanted the people who bought the ticket to fill it. We to did. Fill it. We did. And in the dunk contest, it kind of worked against me because I would dunk the ball so hard that sometimes the ball would go in. And it would come out, right? Because it would dunk it so hard. So I, um, I had to adjust my dunk volume over, over the years. <laughs> turn it down a lot. Yeah, I had to turn it down a lot, a little bit. What is the best attempt at a modern day Gary Payton and Sean Kemp tandem in the NBA right now? The best attempt. It, it sets up to be Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. We haven't seen it yet. You've seen preseason, but boy, I mean, Blake Griffin can jump out of the gym, and Chris Paul is as good as there is in the league as far as the point guard goes and alley oop. So, I think you're lo you're looking at it right there. Yeah, I think so. I think um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to double that. I mean, I I, I said that Blake's uh, dunk was weak last year when he jumped over the car with the choir singing. I, I, that was weak. I said that it was. I did. I said that uh, it was weak, but. <laughs> <laughs> He should have done a long way, right? He should have done at least over the hood. I mean. Yeah, over yeah, over the top, right? So I, I don't know. I just think I think that he's a he's a great talent man, and now that he has a guy that's throwing their alley oops, but also they have another player on the team named DeAndre Jordan. Yep. He's uh, he's actually one of my favorite players to watch, along with Blake. Mm -hmm. He's also one of my favorite players to watch. But those two, I mean, I can only imagine how many alley oops uh, Paul's going to throw this year. He probably break a record. You're looking at me now. Yeah, it's your turn, uh, my I'm, friend. I'm, I'm a NBA hating Seattleite. You gotta get over that. Man. You gotta get over it. <laughs> it's hard to get over it. Uh, I have no idea. I'll, I'll go with. I'll go with Paul. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't look. I don't think there's anyone out there like Peyton and Kemp. I don't. I, I mean, to be honest with you, where, where it was completely identified with the two of them, how you play. When you after you guys got a couple years into it, man. I mean, it, the, the instinct, the the. the I mean, Gary would never look even once. I mean, not even once in front of you, knowing that you were exactly how many steps behind you were. The sort of stuff that can only happen when you play together. Well, and some of those alley oops looked like he wasn't looking because he'd have to jump out of the gym to go get it, and he you know, could. Like that said, was the beauty of it. Absolutely. And I made the mistake of telling Gary Payton just to throw it anywhere. I could it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that, man? Yeah, I made that mistake. <laughs> and he started throwing and it he anywhere. He just started throwing it anywhere. I mean, over his head, behind his back. Over his head of the ones I remember, Off man. the backboard, you name it. He'd keep running to get out of the way. Man, I said, come on, can you... Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but you gotta have time together. I mean, maybe Chris Paul and those guys will get it going. But I mean, you, can you get it going right away? Not right away. It takes time. Uh, it took me and Gary a little time to get it going. You know, it, 
chemistry is what it's all about in this business, whether it's football, basketball, it's what it's about. Um, you know, you seen last year with the three in Miami, chemistry didn't work. But yeah. also you seen the two in Dallas where chemistry just worked real smooth with Jason Kidd and the whiskey. So I think two is better than three. Our listener question today comes from the 360. The greatest Sonic ever. Who is it? Well, I'm going to go first. The greatest Sonic ever, ever is Lenny Wilkins because he played and he coached. So that's my pick. I, one championship. I've always said one, one and one for me are, are Sean and Gary. You take your pick. It's one of those two for me. I probably burn more fun, but man, when you playing and coaching, that's a heck of a. That's whew, That's tough. That's that's yeah. a lot of stress, and it's. But when you win the championship, that's got to be a lot of excitement. So Lenny didn't, <laughs> <laughs> Lenny didn't bring the same funk, is what you're saying? I was saying Lenny, man, he did a great job. Man. He won that championship. That's the only one we got here. Yes, it is about championships, isn't it? It is. Although, uh, boy, the glove is tough to argue against. He was here for a long, long time. Sean was here for a long, long time. Very good times. But I like the championship line. I'm going to go with Lenny, too. I mean, why not? Well, then you could have gone with Sigma or Dennis Johnson. or They didn't coach, though. Although Sigma did. Sigma tried, but, you know, assistant coach and everything like that. You know, Lenny, Lenny all-time winning as coach, too. Man, that's, that's tough. Imagine playing. How do you sub a guy out and be like, come on out, let me shoot this jumper right now. <laughs> You're out. I'm you know, in. Let's think, go. You know what? I'm, a, I'm coming in after every time out, for sure. <laughs> well, that's, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? That's why I don't think anyone's done it for... 25 or 30 years. So you can drop the play for yourself in the timeout. It used to happen every now and then. You used to, in fact, uh, uh, Dave DeBusher with the Detroit Pistons in the 60s was 23 years old. They made him player coach. Wow. I, I'm talking about something that will never happen again. It won't happen again. Too many politics involved with the game now. How, how David much? Stern would veto that. <laughs> yeah, we, we, see, yeah, we see how he works his magic. A little creep. Uh, how about this one? Uh, Sean, somebody wants to know, what's your favorite item on the food menu and drink menu at Oscar's Kitchen? Favorite drink is the Rain Man. Favorite drink is the Rain Man. What's, what's in the Rain Man? <laughs> favorite drink is the Rain Man. It's called a uh, little pineapple juice, a little 151, and a little something something. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't know what your favorite food is, but I like to register the first complaints at the Sean Camp show. No, I like the uh, I like the ribs there. Actually, I had the ribs last night. I went down and had the ribs and the Greek salad, so uh, I put, that's what I like to eat. All right, my complaint is this: Why didn't you bring anything? And when you do bring something uh, next you know week, what? make next it the turkey dip. Turkey dip. Ooh, that, have you ever had a turkey dip with the cheese and bacon on it? Wow, that sounds well, that good. Well, that sounds interesting. That's what I bring for you guys. Oh, yes. boy. Life oh, is good. Yes. Life is good. I can't wait for next Wednesday. <laughs> That's actually, and that, that is my favorite thing at Oscars. I'll bring you a dessert since you That's gave me a shout out. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. I like that right there. <laughs> Hell, come in tomorrow. I mean, just come in all week. So we, uh, I had a chance to talk with you, and we, we did a little charity thing for, for Seattle U and was asking, the NBA at that point wasn't playing, and it was looking like, man, they might not play. And, and you said, well, they're going to. They're gonna have to play. Did you always think that they would they would work this thing out? You went through you went through the same thing basically in '98. Yeah, we did. Uh, except for this, it was a little different, uh, and, I, and I can tell you the reason why. Um, Ten years ago, when I was involved with the lockout, before I became Chunky K. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when you were lean, mean Sean, before you became Big Sean. Hey, you still have the best quote came from that in Cleveland when they you said. Know, I know what, what that quote is. Best playing weight. 20 and 10. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. That is gold right there. <laughs> but as you still lean mean, Sean. At no, this I, point. but you know, 10, year, 10 years ago, I think uh, in, in these negotiations, what happened was was uh, the owners were trying to position themselves to do what they just done. And right this year, they basically tried to take advantage of these younger guys, is what it is. Yes. Uh, I think the owners looked at today's game, and they said that there's not as many good players in the game as what it was maybe 10 years ago. Maybe not top-notch as Michael Jordan or David okay. Robertson or some of these guys. And I think they wanted to adjust the years of the contract. I think they wanted to adjust a few different things. And, and, and I think it's always about the owners positioning themselves in for the next agreement. Right. You know, so I think they edge up a little bit. And you see they never open up their books, so it's always about mm -hmm. them getting back whatever they possibly can to balance things out. I think the NBA is definitely losing an attendance, but 
I mean, it's really the owner's problems because they're the ones that built these huge arenas. Yeah, they had their first, they turned it around for the first time last year, and it's funny. And again, that didn't have anything to do with the owners. Everyone criticized LeBron for doing the decision, yet it created a good and evil thing. It created a, an enemy to go after, a king of the hill, which, you know, kind of brought everyone up with it. But, you, I mean, in all honesty, the players, they, they, they figure the players can't hang together. They won't hang together. And I think that's what they bet this year, and I think it went against the owners a little bit. I think the players did hang together, and uh, they hung quite strong. And it, it actually hurt the owners in their decisions a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes in, in, the, in the negotiation, you lose the battle as far as its numbers, but you actually gain in strength because you stay together. Mm -hmm. And I think with the players, I think they gain a lot just because they stuck together. Um, now, if the, if the, if the uh, union would have split up, it would have been a terrible thing for the players. That would have been the worst thing that could have happened. So just by them sticking together and getting this deal done, it le at least lets you know that the players really wanted to get a deal done. Maybe the owners were holding off for yeah. as long as possible. Let me ask you the question everybody's texting in here, and they want to get your thought on it. Is the reality or the possibility of the NBA coming back to Seattle? It's going to happen. I, I, I truly believe it's going to happen. But, I mean, I just think that people are going about it the wrong way. Um, I think what the NBA is asking for <coughs> is, a, uh, is an arena. And what we have to, what we have to do in this area is find a way to build an arena. And then by building an arena, it shows the NBA that can bring a team back here. But when there's no arena and there's no plans for arena, there's not even a site for arena, it makes it tough. I think it, it still makes the, the job hard, but I think it's doable. And I think um, it just comes from people in the community joining together, and there'll be a little, little pieces joining together, and then at the end there'll probably be some big wig that comes in and puts a fortune down that takes over the whole thing, and that's fine. But I just think people generally in this area misses the game of basketball. I was here for 41 years. Um, you know, I came here 20 some odd years ago, started working in the community with the Sonics when I was 19 years old. Um, it, it taught me a lot because I thought that the Sonics done more in the community than the other teams, than the Seahawks and also the Mariners. So it was, it was fun to me to be a part of the Sonics back then, to work in the community, to get to know different people, and, uh, and today I still continue a lot of those relationships. So I think, uh, you know, the big picture is this, man. It, it, the Sonics was a real big in the community. And a lot of these guys that maybe a little younger than me and stuff can remember all the camps, all the, all the schools and all the, all the visits, all the uh, summer gym hoop camps and see first hoop, hoop camps and stuff that they did. I mean, it, that stuff becomes big, man, when you get so there. Stuff, it, 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 that's who you become, you know, when you go through that as a little kid and you see maturity, you see that guys you idolize and stuff like that, I mean, you want that stuff for your same kids. Uh, I mean, it upsets me that I can't take my kid to a game here in mm -hmm. Seattle to take him down and, and see LeBron James or see Kobe Bryant, see some of these guys that they look up to so much on TV. So I can only imagine what some of the other people in the, in the community feel. And you see yourself being a little part of that? Absolutely. I mean, if the team comes back, I would love to be a part of it. I think... Um, you know, I'm not one of these guys that's going to, you're not going to see me on the newspaper blasting off uh, stuff because I don't really know a lot of the insights of it. Mm -hmm. But if the team wished to come back in this area, I would love to be a part of it in any, in, in any way possible. Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll get some momentum behind it. I know Gary has spoken up and talked about it, and I don't, I don't know what, you know, his connections are or how involved he is, but he said that's the main focus of his. And, and it would it would be nice to see former Sonics getting involved with it. I think that might build some momentum. You know, I, I, I'm with Sean, though. I mean, it's just... It's frustrating because well, yeah, it's you've pointless got to find a site. unless you get a building going. I mean, it is pointless otherwise. Well, and maybe Bellevue is a site. I don't even care. I'm, no, I'm, I'm somebody said, I'll drive to Tacoma, I'll drive to Bellevue, I'll drive to Seattle. As long as the team's there, I'm in. Count me in. Absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we took a year, we drove to Tacoma. It was a, one of the worst drives ever. Oh. But, you know, <laughs> in that traffic <laughs> time, we did it. You know, we had fun when we got down there to Tacoma Dome. It was cold, <laughs> but we had fun in the Tacoma Dome. <laughs> <laughs> that actually was a year it didn't end good, but that was a good year. It was. It that, was. That, that one year at Tacoma was a very it was, good year. It was a good year, man. That, that's the year that the Lakers beat us at the end, and yeah. that was upsetting. But it, it was actually a good year of playing down there. And uh, we had new fans and everything from Tacoma area. It worked out well for us. Did so. you hate the Jazz as much as I did? Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> I hate to even you know, tell you what, the worst thing about it is to go to Salt Lake City and play. Oh, oh man. Awful fans. The Romans. Awful. 
the religious, but you know they they let it out when Daniel. Yeah, <laughs> the door. That's all out. That's all out, man. Yeah, two worst, the two worst places to play at it would be uh, Utah Jazz, and the worst place to play at is Sacramento Kings. Really? Cowbells. Oh, yeah, that's right. Those oh, yeah. cowbells. I tell you what, if you're losing and those you, they start hitting those cowbells in Sacramento, that is the. I mean, you really want to. You want to just reach over there and penitentiary slap somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, see, that's what we're, that, that goes back to what we were talking about before. Be annoying. Yeah. The best you can do as a fan to try to impact stuff is to be annoying. Those cowboys, well, Phil Jackson, I mean, that game big with the Lakers and everything like that. Drove yeah, everyone nuts. I mean, it, just, it is. It, it, it gets to the, the, underneath your skin. I mean, and, uh, the fans don't help either because they're yelling. They put them real close to the uh, the seats, which is the best way to do it. That's, that's what you yeah, had. Right. Yeah, it is. It's, that's the thing about Key Arena. That, sorry, that doesn't work because it's one of the best places to play ball. I mean, with the fans on top of you like they are there and everything like that. Madison Square Garden. Yep. Thank Rat you. heaven. Oh, yeah. in the back and you know, like you go to stretch out on the floor, you gotta. Do that on the court. Make sure the rats run across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Key Arena, no rats. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we need a new arena. Yeah, we Something's do, wrong man. with that picture, man. I know, I know. All right, well, this is great. This is going to be great. Uh, 1 o'clock uh, next week. Every Wednesday. Turkey, uh, turkey dip. Turkey dips. Yeah, Everyone. turkey dip. No problem. Let KK bring them over if we got to, man. Oh. Is Carrie out there, by the way? To take, take, all right, we're, we're going to take you across to the next room, man. Okay, okay. Look at all the people in the room. We don't have this many people in it when it's just you and I here. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what that's about, by the way. <laughs> They're not nearly as excited to see us. <coughs> be honest about that. Hey, by the way, you found the Seahawks at all? Yes, I am. I'm all over the Seahawks. I'm raising that 12th man flag. There's all the right. announcement. Man. Yes, sir. Woo! That's, who's, that's who's doing it before yeah. the 49er game. Before that's the 49er game, man. It's uh, Christmas Eve. It's going to be fun. How about that? Man, There's the news. Yeah. Breaking yeah. news, Sean Kemp raising the 12th man flag at a, at a yeah. crucial game. For at the a Seahawks. crucial game, man. And uh, You know what, they got, you know, among, amongst the highlights, uh, we've talked about this before you came in, too. I hope they show the Sonics, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, where did that go? Uh, you know, I, I talked about unique stuff, and most everyone, you know, Gary doesn't get hype or you know, let's go fans. Where did you come up with that, or did you come up with that? No, it was just uh, it was us sitting around, and we were like, um, they were like, do do some things if you think you can get the crowd into it. I was like, man, I'm, I look up there sometimes, and the crowd is up there up there worried about the little ten cent, fifteen cent beer night up there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me the mic. Give me. Yeah, baby. Yeah. It's the Sonics, baby. So it's right out of the shoot, man? Right out of the shoot. So there you go. Well, because that was the most memorable one, as it turned out. It was, yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, you know, it, the Seattle Coliseum was one of the funnest places to play. Mm -hmm. It really was. And, uh, you know, when the, the people get packed in there, man, they were, they were just fans. You know, the tickets weren't the most expensive, and they were just true fans screaming. And uh, you could feel it from the top of the... The, the Coliseum to the bottom of it, and uh, I appreciate all those yells. Yeah, that was great. And, and then, I mean, that's the sad thing if it, that's the lead key arena at Seattle Center is, is the best thing about it was after the game, you just kind of wandered out with everyone. Absolutely, man. And it, it, it upsets me, man. Just <laughs> the kids don't get a chance to see that, man. Just don't get a chance to feel that. So many good nights coming out that gym, just high fiving people, you know, hugging people and stuff. And, uh, you know, if we kept that team here, we have a pretty good team right now also doing some high fives. Yeah, that's, Holy cow, man. That's 41 yeah. nights a year down there. <laughs> well, Kevin, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know who yeah, you're talking about, I mean, man. Yeah, I mean, if you were going through some of those same high fives that I was doing, you would be going through the same thing right now, watching these young fellas. Do you always have a relationship with the fans? Is that just a natural thing that you just had? Because you yeah. had it kind of right away. Oh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, the way that it works is like this. When I, like I said, I came here when I was 19 years old. Uh, you know, I wasn't wasn't a starter when I came to Seattle, so people kind of seen the transformation of what I did. I was a guy that was in the gym two hours early before the game started out there working out and stuff, and they kind of seen how hard I worked, and I got a chance to sit around and talk to the fans, and you know, and I mean, connected right away. Absolutely, right away. And All it took is one big dunk. Yeah, <laughs> but I know it, it, it probably did, but but you're right. I mean, it's why I thought people responded to Gary Payton too. Well, I th I Work hard. I do. I think it, it's more of a uh, blue-collar worker, yeah. just relentless attitude out there on the court, and uh, not afraid to uh, 
you know, not afraid to get banged up, stitched up, or anything. So that's what it's about. I think that's what the fans appreciate. Yeah, the fans in, in Cleveland and Orlando and Portland, they're not as good, were they? It wasn't as good, man. They don't appreciate those stitches, man. When you get those stitches across the eye, they don't appreciate that. They say, that's a, you're supposed to get a stitch up. You're a big guy. Go ahead. Take those stitches. So, uh, you know, it works out. I think uh, the fans are, fans all around the world are great, but the fans in Seattle are the best. That's a perfect way to end the show, man. The very first one. This was a blast. I appreciate it, fellas. We'll see you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday. That's uh, Sean Kemp. He's going to be with Bob and Graz every single Wednesday. Oh, that's good stuff.